What's up guys, John here, and I'm going to talk about the downsides of using an APU. First of all, I'm just going to touch on some lighter spots and I'm going to move up towards larger issues. Um, now, not to say that the first issues aren't issues, they definitely are, but um, they're not ones that, that matter quite as much. First of all, overheating. Now, this matters a lot to me because I have a Toshiba and it's pretty horrible. Now what happens with an APU is you have the CPU part and the GPU and they're both in one chip. And so they're touching each other, they're, they're going to be around the same temperature, um, probably about two degrees Celsius difference at the most. Um, and the issue that this causes is it causes extreme overheating because you have both things, like they are each other. They are one thing pretty much so they're they're both creating heat it's like twice the heat as normal and you don't and you have them not just contacting but they are the same thing so it that creates even more heat and you your small tiny weak computer fan has to push all of that out and that becomes a big issue and um it'll often overheat and when it overheats performance will go down if you have your fan blowing really hard your performance is going to drop a couple of frames mine drops a lot like in skyrim if i overclock to 3 gigahertz for example i normally do 2.8 but if i did overclock to 3 um or 2.8 either one is work works or whatever what would happen is once the fan starts blowing really hard, I drop like seven frames per second. And that might not happen for all computers, but it happens with my stupid old Toshiba. Um, next issue, battery life. Now, an APU just consumes so much more battery than um, even like, let's say you had an i3 and uh, okay graphics card built into a laptop. That'd probably consume about the same or a little less than this would and that's saying a lot because if you had an okay graphics card it'd still be better than this one um and that leads me to my next point which is the apus are made especially the laptops okay the, this is it the laptops that house the apus and all that is made to be able to game definitely but is it made for gaming no you have gaming laptops and they they go through rigorous testing of current gen games and they have if you get a nice one like asus or something and this doesn't really apply to the the apu series because asus doesn't make their apu series for gaming you don't see them labeled as a gaming laptop but if you do have a gaming laptop it has proper ventilation and um things that are more necessary for gaming and they help with cooling and uh you have more drive bays and ports and stuff like that and so basically you have less overheating um well i mean you have a, a hotter graphics card if you have a really nice gaming laptop but you have a better ventilation system with a gaming laptop than you would with an apu laptop that can do gaming but isn't made completely to game next point memory must be shared okay so pretty much if you have a um the the gpu portion of the apu has to get shared memory from the ram now it doesn't always get shared memory from the ram but when it does it takes away from your ram so if you have only four gigabytes you're going to have extreme issues when games are more demanding on your video card and on your RAM because they're going to be like having a, a struggle against each other um, allocation wise and that's a pretty big issue and if you had a dedicated graphics card you could just make it so you didn't allocate any RAM to it if you had like a 3 gigabyte um, 670M NVIDIA card and because you don't need more than 3 gigabytes of video RAM unless you're ridiculous um next one the power you have to share the power between the two and this is a pretty big issue because since they were since apus require even more power 
it's still not any more power than like an i3 would get and that's an issue because you're powering both a cpu and a gpu so it has to share the power between the two and that's both that's both um uh processing video power and voltage power so it has to share both of those like a 50 percent cut not for the voltage but for the um the processing video power because the, they're both one device they're both one chip so um if you have a dedicated graphics card with an apu your apu instead of getting 50 percent or whatever it's getting power um performance wise it will get 100 percent power and it will be up there in the charts it'll be seriously it's if you have an apu like the next series the trinity apus they're not out yet well they're out with computers but they're not um amd hasn't had their refresh yet so you can't buy them separately but you can buy them with the desktops and stuff anyway the trinity series like the a10 apus if you had an a10 and like a nice dedicated graphics card your a10 would be up there with the i7s it would be either at the lowest um ivy bridge i7 or a little above that or it would be at like the highest i5 ivy bridge it is ridiculous how powerful apus can be if they have 100 percent of their uh, sorry if they have 100 percent of their power um and that's really all i wanted to talk about today thanks for watching comment rate subscribe um i'll if you have a question just ask and i love to have discussions in the comments so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time